Fatima and yes, Hamza. Sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, so basically in the last class, we had completed up to ideal and non-ideal solution. Any doubts in the previous lectures? <clears throat> Fatima, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with the <clears throat> ideal and non-ideal solution completed. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to start a new topic, which is Polygative property. So, write a new topic that is polygative property. So, see what is polygative property? <clears throat> Basically, any diluted solution, <clears throat> the solution which is diluted, that means <clears throat> in a solution there is more quantity of solvent, any diluted solution which depends on the number of solute particles, that property is called polygative property. Polygative property is the property which depends on the number of solute particles, not on the nature of solute particles. So I'm going to write the definition of it. Please write with me. Those property of <coughs> dilute solutes. <clears throat> which depends on which depends on number of solute particles <clears throat> and not on the nature of solute particles. Please write. So basically, any property of a dilute solution which depends on the number of solute particles, not on the nature of solute particles, is called polygative property. Let me know when you are finished with this. Hamza, Fatima. Done, sir. <laughs> are you also done? Yes, sir. Okay. So there are four colligative properties. I'm going to write the name. The first one is basically a relative lowering in vapor press that we already cover. Relative lowering in vapor pressure. The second one is elevation in boiling point. Elevation in boiling point. The third is depression in freezing point. 
depression in <coughs> freezing point and the fourth one is osmotic pressure and the fourth one is osmotic pressure i am going to explain one by one the first which we already covered when we <coughs> when i taught you vapor pressure of solution containing non volatile solute so this rlvp that means a relative lowering in vapor pressure rlvp that means relative lowering in vapor pressure <coughs> and here we got a formula mole fraction of solute will be equal to pure pressure upon partial pressure of a or solution pressure pressure of solution upon pure pressure <laughs> this is basically mole fraction of solute that represents it depends on the number of solute particles mole fraction of solute p not a is vapor pressure of pure liquid a vapor pressure of pure a p a is partial pressure of a partial pressure of a or you can also call pressure of solution vapor pressure of v that means vapor pressure of solution because in this solution the solute is non volatile which does not have any vapor pressure that's why partial pressure of a will be equal to the total pressure of solution or pressure of solution we can call it okay both of you <clears throat> Let me know when you are finished with this. then both of you <clears throat> fatima hamza Hamza, are you done with this? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Going for the next RL uh, uh, colligative property, that is 
elevation in boiling point. Elevation in <coughs> boiling <coughs> point. So what is uh, uh, elevation in boiling point? That means, see what we are talking about. What is the situation? There is a volatile solvent. This this solvent is volatile. And we have a non-volatile solute, non-volatile solute that we dip in volatile sol uh, solvent. So we got a solution in which A and B both are present. This is the situation. Now there was a question I asked here: the partial pressure, uh, the pressure of A will be P not A, and here. P A that represents partial pressure of A. We will not talk about P B partial pressure of B because it will it will be equal to zero since it is non volatile solute. <clears throat> so can anyone tell me? I am again asking the same question. P not A will be equal to P A. P not A greater than P A or P not A less than P A or none of this. Which of the following option is correct for this situation? <coughs> Fatima, Hamza. Which of the following option is correct, Fatima? Hamza? Yes, sir. Can you tell me the correct option? Is it B? B, yes. The pure vapor pressure of A will be greater than partial pressure of A or the vapor pressure of a in this solution container <clears throat> so can i ask a question if pa that means pa is lesser than this much that means here the vapor pressure vapor pressure is less that means boiling point is higher yes or no <clears throat> i gave you a relation vapor pressure inversely proportional to force of attraction and if force of attraction is lesser or force of attraction is greater, boiling point will be higher. Force of attraction is directly proportional to boiling point. So since vapor pressure in this solution is lesser, that means force of attraction is greater. And if, uh, if force of attraction is greater, that means boiling point greater. That's why there will be elevation in boiling point of solution. If you are going to add urea in water, the boiling point of water is pure water is 100 degrees centigrade but if you are going to find the boiling point of uh, solution in which urea is contained that uh, the boiling point of that solution will be little higher than the pure solvent that means water that's why we call it elevation in boiling point so i am going to <clears throat> represent a graph and before that going to give you a definition of boiling point what is boiling point? So please write with me the temperature at which the temperature at which vapor pressure of solution becomes equal to the equal to atmospheric pressure becomes equal to atmospheric pressure that temperature is called boiling point <clears throat> if vapor pressure of solution will be equal to vapor pressure uh, atmospheric pressure that will be uh, that temperature will be equal to is called boiling point please write it
let me know when you are finished with this. Done so. Very good. Hamza, <clears throat> are you also done? No. I'm going to plot a graph. I have already given you graph between vapor pressure and temperature. So the graph of we are going to plot the graph of pure solvent and graph of solution also. So the pure solvent will have a graph like this. And pure sol uh, pure solvent has a graph like this, and the graph for solution is this. Now, at this temperature, you are going to see vapor pressure. That uh, this is the vapor pressure at this temperature. This is for T not B. That means this is basically for <coughs> pure solvent. T not B pure solvent. This is for solvent, and this is for <clears throat> this is for solids so if you are going to see this is the boiling point of solution and t not b that means pure solvent boiling point of pure solvent and here we are going to find delta tb delta tb will be equal to boiling point of solution minus boiling point of pure solvent and experimentally we found that i am going to write first tb is boiling point of solution t not b is t not b is boiling point of solvent pure solvent pure solvent now experimentally we found that Delta T B is directly proportional to molality. This small m represents the concentration term, which is molality. And also, delta T B to remove this proportionality sign, we are going to use a constant that is K B, known as ebullioscopic constant. Ebullioscopic. Ebullioscopic constant. Also known as molal elevation constant. Also known as molal elevation constant. Please write. <clears throat> Please write it and let me know if you are done with this. Done with this, experimentally we found that 
delta t be directly proportional to molality and to remove this con uh, proportionality sign we are going to use a constant that is known as kb and kbliopic constant we or we also call it molar elevation constant please write it Atma, are you done with this? Yes, sir. Hamza, are you done with this? Yes, sir. Now see, this KB has a unit. We got a formula that is delta TB will be equal to kb into m so kb will be equal to delta tb that means change in temperature boiling point of the <coughs> solution and boiling point of the pure solvent upon m now see delta tb will have a unit kelvin and molality has a unit mole per kg so the unit of kb will be equal to kelvin kg per mole this is the unit of kb please write it and generally it depends on temperature and solvent i am going to give you a question on this formula on this concept which is very easy Eighteen gram of glucose is dissolved in one kg of water. Please write it. One kg of water. Calculate boiling point of solution. If <coughs> boiling point of water, boiling point of water three seventy three Kelvin and KB four. Water is zero point five two Kelvin kg per mole. Kelvin kg per mole. Please do this question. It is very easy. Can you solve it, Hamza, Fatima, Nora?
this is the formula we are going to apply and delta tb is delta tb is equal to boiling point of solution minus boiling point of pure solvent <clears throat> hamza can you solve it fatima nora Hamza, are you there? Yes, sir. Are you able to solve it or not? Should I explain it? Fatima and Nora. Yes, sir. Explain it. Okay. <clears throat> so see, Fatima, what is given? First, focus on that. this glucose is basically <clears throat> non volatile solid and which is 18 g and you can see dissolved in 1 kg of water that means water is the solvent and we need to calculate boiling point of solution after mixing glucose into water we need to <clears throat> find the boiling point of that if boiling point of water that means pure solvent is 373 kelvin and kb for water is 0.52 Calvin kg per mole. So <coughs> we have a formula. Delta T B is equal to K B into M. Delta T B is equal to K B into M. And we also know that delta T B is equal to del delta T B is equal to boiling point of solution minus boiling point of pure solvent will be equal to K B has the value zero point five two. And we also know that formula for molality that is number of moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kg this is mass of solvent in kg <laughs> now so this is given t not b that means boiling point of pure solvent that is 373 is given and also we can calculate number of moles of solute and we need to find this number of moles of solute that means glucose is equal to given mass upon molar mass given mass upon molar mass now the given mass is 18 g and molar mass of glucose glucose has a chemical formula that is c6h2l c6h12o6 and if you are going to calculate the molar mass of glucose it will be 180 so we got 18 by 1 by 10 we got 1 by 10 the formula uh, 1 by 10 is the molality that means 0.1 so i am just going to put the value 0.52 into 0.1 upon mass of solvent you can see in kg and it is 1 kg so after solving it tb minus 373 will be equal to 0.1 into 0.5 0.52 it will be 0.052 and so the boiling point of solution will be after moving this uh, to the right hand side it will be in positive so the boiling point of solution will be uh, 373.052 kelvin so you can see in the pure solvent the boiling point was 373 kelvin but the boiling point of solution after adding non volatile solute that is glucose becomes 373.052 kelvin please write it
Let me know when you are done with this. Everyone, Hamza, Fatima, and Nora. Fatima, are you done with this? Yes, sir. Very good. Hamza, Nora. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now going for the next <coughs> polygative property, that is depression in freezing point. Depression in reason point. So basically, after adding a non volatile solute in a volatile solvent, the <coughs> freezing point will be decreased. That means the uh, freezing point of solution will be lesser than the freezing point of the pure solvent. So I'm going to define freezing point. Please write with me. So basically what is freezing point? Freezing point is the temperature at which vapor pressure of liquid becomes equal to the vapor pressure of solid state. That means the temperature at which vapor pressure of both liquid and solid state are equal. That temperature is called freezing point. And whenever we are going to add non-volatile solute into a volatile solvent, then the freezing point of solution will be decreased. So please write it.
delta Tf here will be equal to freezing point of pure solvent minus freezing point of solution. So I'm going to write T naught F is freezing point of pure solvent. And Tf is freezing point of solution. <clears throat> this is for solution, and this is for solvent. <clears throat> Please write it. Hamza, Fatima, and Nora. Hamza, are you done with this? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Now see, experimentally, we found that delta Tf is also directly proportional to molality. This is small m is molality. And to remove this proportionality sign, we are going to use a constant that is called Kf. And this KF is known as cryoscopic constant or molal depression constant or also known as molal depression constant. So we got a formula and we know that delta TF is equal to the uh, freezing point of pure solvent solvent minus freezing point of solution. Please find the unit of K. Unit of K. Please let me know the unit of K. What is the unit of Kf? Fatima, Namira, and Nora.
Nora, what is the unit of KF? See, the unit of KF is very easy. KF will be equal to delta TF upon M. Again, what is the unit of temperature? Calvin. What is the unit of Calvin? Mole per kg. So if you are going to calculate it, the unit will be same as KB. Calvin kg per mole. Is that clear, everyone? <clears throat> Hamza, <laughs> Nora, Fatima, are you done with this? Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a question on this. What amount of C2H5O, that means ethanol assumed to be non volatile <coughs> must be added. or must must be dissolved must be dissolved in 1 kg of water so that it freezes at it freezes at minus 2 degree centigrade minus 2 degree centigrade also it is given that <clears throat> freezing point of water is 0 degree centigrade and kf for water equals to 1.86 kelvin kg per minute this question is also based on formula. Hamza, can you solve it? Namira, Nora,
Okay, please try Namira and Nora. Fatima and Hamza, what about you? Fatima, are you trying it? Yes, sir. Okay, let me know if you are not able to solve it. I'm waiting for your reply, everyone. Please let me know when you are done with this. Okay, Namira. See, first of all, whatever is the given, just take that in consideration. Like what amount of, <coughs> you can see, what amount of C2S5 was. That means we need to calculate mass first. Mass of ethanol we need to calculate. And what is given? It, uh, the ethanol is assumed to be non-volatile. Dissolved in 1 kg of water. Dissolved in 1 kg of water. That means mass of solvent is 1 kg. So that it freezes at minus 2 degrees centigrade. That means this is the boiling, uh, sorry, freezing point of solution. This is the freezing point of solution. <clears throat> I'm going to write this is freezing point of solution. Point of solution. Also, it is given that freezing point of water, that means pure solvent is 0 degree centigrade. And here Kf is also given. Now you know that delta Tf will be equal to Kf into M. 
and kf has a value that is 1.86 1.86 into m and delta tf has a value t not f minus tf tf is the freezing point of solution and t not f is the freezing point of water uh, pure solvent so i am going to write 0 minus tf has the value which is minus 2 will be equal to 1.86 into m we are going to find m first that is molality so molality will be minus into minus that will be plus upon 1.86 this is the molality we got now we need to calculate <coughs> now we need to calculate mass of ethanol so see if you can get this molality value of molality we can apply number of moles formula like number of moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kg mass of solvent in kg and you can see molality as a value 2 upon 1.86 and also we know that number of moles of solute that is given mass upon molar mass uh, can anyone tell me what is the molar mass of c2h5oh <sighs> can anyone tell me the molar mass of NaOH, uh, C2H5OH? Hamza, Fatima, Namira, Nora. Molar mass of C2H5OH. It's wrong. Nora. Carbon, two carbon is there and uh, one has atomic mass 12 plus hydrogen has atomic mass 1 and there are 6 and oxygen is 16 into 1. So if you are going to, very good. If you are going to calculate it, it will be given mass upon molar mass and mass of solvent that is given in the question that is 1 kg. So it will be like this much. What I just did is number of moles of V, I use the formula of number of moles upon mass of solvent is given as 1. So we can write M upon 46 will be equal to 2 upon 1.86. So M will be equal to 2 into 46 upon 1.86. Let me know the mass of C2H5 ones. Please do it. Let me know when you are done with this. No, 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 it's wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Did I do mistakes? No. Yeah, it's almost that much. No, no. It will be basically 49.46 something. That will be approximately 50 grams. Fatima, got your answer? Namira?
Hamza? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I change the slide? Yes, sir. Fatima and Namira, please speak up. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now there is another question. The freezing point. The freezing point depression constant. The freezing point depression constant. That is Kf for benzene. is 5.12 Kelvin kg per mole and the freezing point depression for the solution of molality 0 0.078 m containing a non electrolyte that means non volatile containing a non electrolyte solute in benzene Yes. Please calculate freezing point depression. How much it is lower? Please do it. And if you have any doubt in this, let me know. I will explain it to you. We need to find the depression point, uh, freezing point depression. That means we need to calculate the value of delta Tf. This is Let me know if we're done with this. <clears throat> Fatima. This question is very easy. Everything is given directly. We need to calculate the value of delta Tf. I have given the heads. Should I explain Hamza, Namira? This is very bad. You, everyone, 
none of you is replying or anything. Hamza, are you done with this? So we need to calculate the freezing point depression. That means how much it is depressed. So delta Tf will be equal to Kf into M. What is the value of Kf? This has a value of 5.12. And what is the value of M? That is 0 0.078. So if you are going to multiply it, if you are going to multiply it, uh, 5.12, 17 into 0 0.078, it will be approximately 0 0.40 Kelvin. This is your answer. It is so easy. <clears throat> Hamza? This is very bad. Namira? Nora? Fatima? Everyone done with this? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you everyone for the reply. Okay. I'm going to give you another question. If molality of dilute solution if molality of dilute solution is double the value of <coughs> molal depression constant care will be I'm going to give some options to you. Half. This tripled. Tomorrow is your test. And after this question, I'm going to talk to everybody. Please do reply. Either you can speak or you can reply in chat box. <clears throat> if the molality of dilute solution is doubled, the value of depression constant Kf will be. Wrong answer. That's wrong answer. Fatima. This is also wrong, Nora. Any answer from Namira? Very good. See, I told you that KB or K. This depends upon solvent, nature of solvent, and temperature. And we are talking about molality. And molality 
<laughs> it is uh, kf is independent of solution concentration of solution independent independent of concentration of solution so the answer will be unchanged kf will not change if molality is half or double or anything <laughs> kf will be constant is that clear everyone <clears throat> done now going to give another question then i need to talk to you all the question is basically molarity of liquid hcl will be if density of solution is 1.17 gram per centimeter cube please do this question Fatima, can you do it? Hamza, can you do it? Tomorrow there will be test for all of you. Please let me know the topic that you are comfortable or you have studied it well. Hamza and Fatima. There will be test for half an hour. During the classes, Hamza, am I audible to you? Yes. So why don't you speak? At least you should reply. So the answer is thirty-two. The answer is thirty-two or thirty-four. Wait, wait a minute. Thirty-two point something, right? Uh, to be specific, thirty-two point thirty-two point zero five. Actually. Very good, Amza. What about you? Uh, very good, Namira. So there will be taste of 
ideal and non ideal solution for tomorrow <clears throat> at 7:30 to 8:30 our classes will be regular like 6:30 to 7:30 approx 7:30 7:30 we will study and after that there will be four to five questions for you for half an hour of subjective and you have to submit the answer <coughs> solution you have to submit the solution <coughs> to the coaching group okay is that clear everyone is there any doubt in any topic that you want to ask anyone nora <clears throat> nora do you have any doubts in any topics of this chapter because this chapter is almost on completion like we only need to cover the last qualitative property and then moment of factor <clears throat> so this is it for today i am going to see you tomorrow please prepare well for the test and hamza you have given the last test right hamza yes sir but the way you uh, you had written in the answer key is very bad that's why you didn't get any marks you just applied the formula so please i am uh, requesting all of you to do the test in a better way and write it the way you write in exams portion of test uh, it will be basically ideal and non ideal solution ideal based on uh, rolls law you can call it rolls law rolls law that will cover ideal and non ideal solution okay